7 o'clock on a Friday night. And where else would I be but here with you? DJ Stutz here with Little Hearts Academy USA. And I, as always, am just thrilled to be here um, to talk with everyone. Um, so I'm going to start out with a little, you know, business. Um, starting on June 1st, which is a Tuesday night. Hey, Raylene. Starting on June 1st, which is a Tuesday night, um, we are going to be moving our Friday night Facebook Lives to Tuesday nights. So we started out with Friday nights because, you know, we were in the middle of COVID and people were um, hunkered down and staying at home, high Nephi. And, um, and so they're just, you know, they weren't out much doing uh, Friday night stuff. But now it's summer. Things are opening. We actually have some good news from the CDC regarding masks, which I'm thrilled about. So I hope that will move forward quickly. But um, people are busier on their Friday nights. So I am going to uh, move it to Tuesday nights, same time, 7 o'clock. And uh, that is what we're going to do. So plan for that June 1st. I uh, will be on another uh, I think I have one or two more Friday nights before we move. Secondly, I want to do a shout out to one of my listeners and followers. She is an amazing woman. She is the mother of four. And uh, her husband is out of town right now. And so she's got her amazing, her amazing mother. So these kids' grandmother helping her out. And uh, But today is her birthday. Her name is Caroline. And uh, Caroline works so hard for her family and for her kids. She is there for them. She is their advocate. Um, and I am always impressed with the things that she tells me and I get to know and learn about her. So my shout out today is my listener of the week is um, Caroline. So let's move on. One more little item. Um, so... If you go to, and I've got the link here on the on the video, but if you go to www.littleheartsacademyusa.com backslash summer hyphen guide, the link is here, you'll see it. Um, you can sign up and for a free uh, a guide to creating a wonderful summer. So it gives you some questions to answer, some things to think about, and uh, so that you can plan. Last week we talked about how summers don't just, great summers don't just happen, they are planned for. And um, so this guide will help you um, ask the right questions and make those plans. So um, anyway, I hope that you have a chance to go to that. I will be adding to this plan, actually, and tomorrow, um, part of that will be a checklist for traveling with your kids, which we're going to talk about right now. Um, and so you'll get both of those. And um, once you sign up, so you don't have to wait till tomorrow to sign up, once you sign up um, to get that, if you go back to it and you log in, you will have automatic access to the checklist. For traveling so that should help you out all right so traveling with little ones so this can be a great adventure with lots of highs and lots of lows it's just kind of like life isn't it so some kids travel better than others um, so I have some kids and now grandkids that were great travelers easy to handle um, not a problem. Others who struggled with having to sit long periods and um, they would get bored. And so for entertainment, they're bothering their siblings. And so we want to make sure that everyone has um, a good time. And so uh, be uh, aware of how your kids uh, travel. So whether you're traveling by plane, train, or automobile, um, a little planning goes a long way in making that a success. So speaking of planes, trains, and automobiles, those are the three methods of travel that we're going to be talking about tonight. 
So I hope uh, that your plans will be exciting and full of fun and um, that they'll, um, you'll have a wonderful summer. So anyway, make sure, now no matter how you're traveling, um, you're gonna want to make sure that you understand the requirements of both your travel method and your destination. So while the country is at this point starting to open up and at the time of this taping, the CDC just came out yesterday saying that if you're vaccinated, you do not need to wear a mask indoor or outdoor, no matter the size of the group that you're with. So, um, but that doesn't mean that state and local governments are going along with that. Um, New York and Los Angeles have already announced that they're not going along with that. Okay, don't get me started. But, um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you know uh, what those requirements are as far as vaccinations and masks and whatever other thing that they're um, dealing with, with their, whether they're gonna ha have venues closed down, if they're social distancing, if they are um, uh, limiting uh, time that you're, that you're able to enjoy a venue, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have all that information before you get going, and there are no surprises that could ruin uh, your vacation. So keep that in mind. You're gonna to wanna to make sure especially that you have all medications that you are going to need, and that's both for yourself and for your children. Um, if they have inhalers or other medications, uh, make sure that you've got those. And I would keep those close by. So if you're traveling by plane, there would be my carry-on. If you're traveling by car, they would be easily accessible for the times that you're going to need them. And, um, and the same with a train. <clears throat> I know there are a couple other methods of traveling, but these seem to be the main ones. I'm not including ships just yet, but maybe down the road. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, the younger your child is, the more clothes you're going to need because you know they soil themselves, they spill all over everything. Um, they just have this magical way of getting dirty. And if you're a parent that is more concerned about they can't wear dirty clothes or they need to look spick and span all the time, then you're gonna need more clothes. Um, and you may need to, depending on how long you're gone, you may need to plan for some time to do some laundry so that um, you know you have fewer packing requirements. Um, you can get overwhelmed with all the stuff that you're gonna take, especially with the very youngest children. It seems like the smallest children need the most stuff. It's amazing all the things that you wind up taking for their comfort and yours. Um, and so just keep that in mind. Um, and then look at where you're going and decide, do you need a travel bed to go with you? There's some great travel beds on the market right now that you can even get on an airplane. Um, you can set things up, uh, but just consider if that's something that you're going to need. If you're gonna be at a hotel, most hotels, really most hotels, um, are going to have a travel bed um, available. They may charge a little extra for it, they may not, it just depends on the chain, but you're going to want to, ahead of time, um, if you do need one, make sure that it's accessible and make sure that you have one reserved and make sure that that is noted on your reservation so that if you get there and like, oh, so sorry, they're all gone. It's like, no, 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 no. See right here, it says. So you need to find one and uh, you can do whatever it is um, to do that. But I would make sure that it's noted on your reservation that a uh, travel bed or some kind of a bed for a small child is included and needed. So there you go. So the most common way that families travel still today is by car. And um, so it's generally cheaper to travel by car and it's a great way to see the country and to see the landscape, to get to know the state that you live in and the surrounding areas, you know? Um, and so traveling with little, one, little ones that real small ones by car, does have its downside. Um, and so you need to plan for that. Um, 
<laughs> I remember traveling from Los Angeles, California, up to Portland, Oregon by car. Now that's, with no stops, that's a 15 hour drive. And I remember, oh uh, gosh, I was probably 11 or 12 years old, and uh, my dad bought a Dodge Dart. It was sky blue, and it was the first car that we had that had air conditioning. And so we were going to travel up to visit family in Oregon, and um, there were six of us kids at that point. Uh, there were twins who were new little baby guys, and uh, we went in that Dodge Dart <laughs> with six kids and two adults, um, and we traveled up to um, Oregon, and that was quite the travel. So people, um, I don't know, maybe you've heard your parents talk about it. For me, it's a memory of my own, was there would be like this shelf behind the back seat, um, that kind of went over where the um, trunk was, and then there was the window. So here's the rear window, here's the shelf, and then here's where the back of the seat is. And that shelf was kind of prime real estate. <laughs> we would climb up there, and, and that was a great place to fall asleep. Um, and so you'd want to claim that. There was always the bump, the hump in the middle of the, of the back seat, and... Uh, so you would try to avoid getting that. Um, and then sometimes we would put blankets on the on the floor because the, the floor of that got really hot. Um, uh, I don't know the mechanics of it, but I know it would, it would get quite warm. But it was a nice place to stretch out. So so we would put blankets and you know curl up and we would have that hump kind of as a pillow. And then whoever was sitting above you got to use you as a footrest. And you'd go to sleep. <laughs> no seatbelts. We didn't care, you know. <laughs> um, and with six kids in a Dodge Dart, there's no way that everyone's got a seatbelt. Eight people in a Dodge Dart. That was insane. So anyway, it was just a, a fun time. My dad would drive as through as he could, but um, we would uh, stop at historical sites. Uh, my mom would always pack food, and we'd have a picnic lunch, which actually, it may sound like the, you know, the cheap old-fashioned way to go, but it's not a bad idea. It's much better for your kids to be out and running around at a park or whatever, and they're eating not fast food. They've got some, you know, decent food, and, um, and that's a time out um, for you as you travel. So actually, that's something that I do recommend from our past. So driving with little ones is going to take planning. Doesn't that sound like a theme? <laughs> I kind of <laughs> seem to say a lot. Oh, this is going to take some planning. But you know, things with kids do. It takes planning to make it successful. So you need to want, you want to ask yourself some questions like, how long is our drive? And then you're looking at your, um, you know, route and you want to plan out where can you take stops? How often are you going to take breaks? Um, and I would suggest that with the little ones, unless they're asleep, let sleeping dogs lie, um, but unless they're asleep, I would plan on about every hour to two hours, somewhere in between there, that they can get out, run around for 10, 15 minutes, have some fun, get some you know, uh, healthy food in them, um, but mostly they are going to need to run around. So. You know, for you to get up on the monkey bars with them and and to play with them, have have a ball that you can kick around, that kind of stuff, uh, that is going to be well worth though that time. You're going to be grateful that you did it. It's it's not great to, um, and depending on how long that drive is, um, you're going to, yeah, driving straight through, no, that won't work with little ones. So just plan for that. Um, and then have, in addition to a picnic and stuff, you know, they're going to want to munch in the car. You don't want to fill them full of sugar and sugary drinks because then they get on that sugar high and they're more wired and they're going to give you a harder time. So you're going to want to make sure that you have some healthier snacks. Um, you know, the sugar can, that they have can be from fruit. You can have crackers and um, cheese and veggie sticks and um, my mom used to put, if you don't have any peanut allergies, my mom used to put um, the peanut butter and the celery and, and then it was fun to throw a few um, 
raisins or craisins. Those are the dried cranberries. You can throw those on top of there. And uh, But know what your kids like, but you really want to limit the sugar intake while they are on a trip. So keep that in mind. You might want to consider one of the things that my husband and I did when our kids were little was uh, we would plan our drive through the night <clears throat> just so that that's when our kids slept. And so it went much easier. But you want to make sure that you're starting out with enough sleep that that you can um, make it through the night. You don't want to have you know some fiery crash because you fell asleep at the wheel. So that's going to take some planning, but it worked really well for my husband and I for many years. Um, and then make sure that your children can sleep comfortably. Long gone are the days that I just talked to you about, where kids would you know climb up on that shelf on uh, uh, by the back window or lay out on the floor. Um, or I remember my uncle putting together using wood and so making it the whole back seat um, a platform with plywood and then they just put pillows and cushions and stuff and then the kids would just lay out and sleep. Well, they can't do that anymore and they have to stay in those car seats. So you want to make sure that you're doing things and looking for products that um, will help them. So little personal note. So a week from today, um, I am driving with my husband. We're going to head to um, Salt Lake and we're meeting with my um, youngest son and his family. And then from there, we're going to drive on to California to spend some time with my oldest son. And um, so we will be having, once we get to where Christian is, we're going to be having our granddaughter Amara with us. Now, Amara will be turning six in uh, June. So that's the age and we're planning. So I've already ordered and I, I didn't come and it's going to come tomorrow. So I can't show you, but it's one of those things that you put over the uh, uh, seatbelt and it's got like a little pillow thing that's here. It's got a, a harnessing here that keeps the seatbelt from, you know, um, coming up against their necks. That's a really good thing to have anyway. When you've got kids in a booster seat, she's at booster seat age. And so, but you want to find... And there's a lot of things on the market, little pillow things that are, they're real thin where it goes around the back and then it's thicker here. So then they can put their head there and be comfortable. But you're, I, I would really spend some time on finding things so that they are comfortable while they are sleeping. They will wake up less often and scream a little less. So that's something to think about. Um, and then make sure that you, you have a car seat that's really comfortable. Now, there's some, as I was doing the research um, and looking for some of these things, uh, that are upward of $350 that claim to be very, very comfortable. And so if you want to spend that money and you have it to spend, that's okay. But there are other things that you can do to make their regular, just jet, regular car seat um, more comfortable. So things like those pillow things, if there's a, a tray thing that they can have or you can put together um, to, you know, so that they can draw and eat and all of those things, all the better. But I would really spend some time on uh, looking at it from a kid's point of view and uh, consider how am I going to make them comfortable? Make sure they're not overheating. Make sure that they don't get too cold. Of course, in the summer, that's generally not a problem. But, um, you know, keep all of those things in mind. The more things that you can strat strategically plan for, the better off you're going to be. Um, so, let's see. You're also going to want to have the comfort items that they need at, at hand. So something like their special blankie or a special stuffed animal, things that uh, are meaningful to them and help them soothe themselves and calm down. Um, and so you want to make sure that you have those easily access accessible. <laughs> and then you might want to consider having an adult sitting in the back seat with the kids. Um, and if you have an older child that's old enough to be in the front, you can switch places with them. And while you're with the younger ones, trust me, that older child will be thrilled to sit up there. Um, and having, just having an adult in the back just calms things down greatly. You can 
quash things before they get out of hand. And so I, I would consider that. And that's something that we did too often was uh, sometimes I, my husband likes to drive and he's better at it anyway. And so uh, I would often sit in the back um, with the younger kids and so I could keep them entertained and whatever. Um, so you're going to want to beforehand really think about how you're going to organize your car. Really think about that because uh, you want to have, again, those important items accessible. So if you need diapers, you want to have some that you don't have to go digging through the back to find the diapers and the wipes and the butt cream and all that stuff. You want to have it easily accessible. If it's gonna be in the trunk, make it right where you can just grab it easily and and um, get it. Um, so, uh, and, and, and really consider that diaper wipes are not just for babies, right? Um, even if you've got older kids, and I'll tell you, even with my youngest, it was like, I don't know what, she was a queen <laughs> making messes in the back of the car, even at like 13, 14. So we had cleanup supplies whenever we would travel with her. So that's something to consider. Um, there are a ton of organizational gadgets that you can get. You could, there's Target has some really good ones um, if you want to go shopping there. Um, Amazon, if you're planning ahead, give time for delivery. But Amazon has just a plethora of things that you can use in the car that um, will help uh, with keeping things organized. There are like uh, things that hook onto the back of your front seat so that it's right there in front of the kids. It might hold an iPad. It could hold um, art supplies. It can hold all kinds of things. So think about what it is that will be meaningful for your kids to have on the trip, and then um, make sure that you're gonna have things organized in a way that uh, they can have access to that. Um, and organizing the car is great. You're gonna wanna have uh, bags for trash. Um, and honestly, if things stay clean, um, People just seem calmer, at least for me. I was not one who could with a ton of clutter and mess, and my husband is even less tolerant of that than I. And so it, I, I just, it would just like make me nervous and anxious. So being able to have things set up so that you can keep things um, as clean as you can will help. Um, and then I want you to also think about, I just read this. It was the best idea. I'm like, oh, I'm totally doing this. It's putting cupcake um, cups in your cup holders. And that helps them stay cleaner. It'll absorb, you know, the little bitty drips that, you know, come down. Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, what a great idea. So that's on the list for our trip next week. Definitely. So then there are some things too that I found that might be kind of fun. So there's a, it's called Crayola, Crayola's Color Wonder, what is it? Art Kit. And it's supposed to be mess free. But here's one of, the, some of the things that I thought were such great ideas is that the markers and the stampers that are included in this are um, ones that only work on paper. So if they write on their clothes, if they write on their skin, it doesn't, mm -mm, it doesn't show up. It will only work on paper. I think that's a great thing to have, even for younger kids, as they learn to, paper is for writing, walls are for holding up the house, right? So think about um, maybe something like that, but having markers and stampers and things that aren't gonna make a mess all over the place that will only work on the paper is going to help keep you calmer instead of finding that there's all these markers on the back of your seat. Um, there are some great card games that don't use technology and you really need to have some of those because while having them sit and watch a movie or whatever um, is fine for part of it, they, it depends on how long your drive is. So the drive that I'm going to have with our five-year-old granddaughter is actually going to be about 13 hours. Um, from Salt Lake getting to California. So, you know, she just, 
it's not good for her to sit and watch. It's not good for anyone to sit and watch movies for 13 hours. And, and she will get bored even of that and the games and stuff. So having something to switch out and, um, and then make the movie something more special. Uh, is it time for a movie yet? No, we got half an hour. What are we going to do till then? So there are things like a scavenger hunt. Um, and I found there's actually, you can find it on Amazon. There is, a, if you look up car games, um, and, and it has a thing with cards in there that you're, you pull a card and everyone's looking for whatever was on that card. And then you pull another card. And so there's those kinds of things. The good old ABC games, if your kids are, are learning to find are their letters, uh, both uppercase and lowercase, it's a great way to support academic skills, which I'm always a uh, game for. Rhyming games, so you say a word. Now, as your kids get to my, so my experience is that um, if they're a little more advanced, three, they're gonna start looking at and understanding rhymes. Four and up, they can usually understand and identify rhymes. So uh, having a rhyming game, uh, would be uh, great to do and it's interactive. You're all talking with one another. You're interacting with one another You're not isolated in your own little bubble, you know with a screen. This is this is great stuff um, And then there's always games that have like initial sounds and ending sounds So this might be something for a child in kindergarten or first grade and up. So if I say uh, Cat and we're doing initial sounds they have to think of another word that starts with that sound. And so, and then you keep going until someone can't think of one and then, um, and then they get a point. So it's like golf, you don't want points. <laughs> and then, and then you pick another letter or another sound. It could be a blend like, um, shh and you know, um, now I can't. Think of <laughs> my brain's dead. It's the end of the week. Um, but anyway, you know, Think of those uh, blends, you can also add those in. You could put a thing with cards um, that have the ABCs and you just pull a card out of the deck and that's the one you're gonna use for that round. You can do the same thing with ending sounds. So children learn to identify initial sounds first, they learn to identify ending sounds second, and then the sounds in the middle are the last thing that they will identify because they're harder to hear. Initial and ending are the easiest to hear. So those are fun games to do. Of course, there's the ever popular 20 questions. Um, and then there's singing songs, singing silly songs. Um, how many of us saying, you know, 100 bottles of beer on the wall? Um, but there are fun songs that you can do. I really like um, the Learning Station. You can get some of their songs on YouTube. Lori Berkner. Um, has a great uh, set of children's songs. Uh, they can be songs from your church. They can just be silly camp songs. All of these you have opportunities to find and learn those and then just sing them as a family and sing them out of key, sing them loud, sing them quiet, sing them in a goofy voice, you know, sing them but you have to stick your tongue out the whole time. Um, just do silly things with that and it's great. Um, so those are some of the things that you can um, think of. And and with, I'm going to jump back to those comfort items. Um, binkies. If your child is one that needs a binky to soothe themselves, get lots of them because they're going to lose them on a trip. You are They will go under the seat. They'll get stuck in between, you know, the, the, the seat in the back. You know, there's that little thing there. So I would get, I would have a ton of them. Um, I don't think you can have too many binkies if that's what your child needs. So, and, and a journey like this is not the time to wean them from their binkies. Um, wait until you're back if that's what you're wanting to do, but make sure you've got those. So make your journey, make the trip part of the vacation, part of the fun. So you're going to plan out those um, interesting places to stop. And you know what? If it takes you an extra day to get there, that's okay. You know, if you find that, oh, there's a fair going on at this town, you know, the 
or there's, um, you know, cherry days at this little rural town. Um, but look for some of the things that are going on on the way. And then that's something for the kids to be really excited about, uh, looking forward to. And it's not so far away as grandma's house or wherever it is you're going. So think about that. Another thing that I like doing with my kids is called a kindness jar. So you can do it whether there's a whole fam a jar for the whole family or there's a jar for each individual child. But um, And then when they uh, do something kind, you can have like um, uh, pom-poms or marshmallows or whatever. And then when that jar is full, then they achieve some kind of a uh, reward. Or we're all going to stop for ice cream if our family jar gets full of, you know, whatever it is. But it's but they get to put things in by being kind to one another, sharing, being quiet so that their sibling can sleep, um, being encouraging, uh, giving compliments, um, being patient, all those kinds of things. We're going to throw them in and let them uh, build up that jar. And it's something for them to focus on. Um, I remember being a kid playing slug bug. Uh, some of you, you might want to give me a thumbs up or something if you remember playing slug bug. But um, it, that can get kind of violent, especially when you, like me, have five younger brothers and only one sister. Um, and so what I like to do is you could play ladybug instead. And so I would give um, each kid, um, you know, a thing of like la ladybug erasers or manipulatives, again, easily found at Michael's or Joanne's, probably Hobby Lobby would probably have some, Amazon for sure um, would have some, Walmart.com would have them. Again, you've got a plan so that they arrive before you leave on your meeting. But I would, um, if they see a, a bug, you know, then they can put one in, in the jar. And if they see a bus, then they can put two. Now, it doesn't have to be a bug. They're harder to find these days. But you can figure something out, whether it's red cars, you know, like a ladybug or whatever. Find it something. And then that's something that's kind of ongoing. Um, and, and what I would like to do is use something like uh, a, a Tupperware or, you know, but it's, it's not too, too big because you want them to be able to be successful. But I would cut an X in the top of it so that they're just shoving them down in and they're not going to fall out and they lose all their bugs and they're like, ah, my bugs are all over. So you want to uh, make sure that they're set up to succeed. So, um, I, yeah, there are, are a ton of things that you can do to, um, just, you cut a slit in that. Um, I've even used, if you could use a, a tennis ball and you slice it open. And so they, when they squeeze it, it opens up and they can put the bug in. And then when they let go, it closes up. And that's actually great for fine motor skills, um, for them to have to use their hands to do that, pick up the small thing, put it in. So um, that's actually a good thing to have for fine motor skills. So those are just some ideas on things that you could do for a car a trip. And so now let's move on to airplanes. Um, so number one, especially for right now, I would check on your airline requirements. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with this most recent CDC um, loosening of um, uh, suggested requirements, um, but I would definitely make sure that I know exactly what the expectations are for that airlines, especially for small children. And then I would make sure you might need to plan ahead and have some practice time where they're keeping that mask on um, if they are required to have that. So you're not faced with that issues and you don't become one of those stories where family kicked off because their three-year-old, you know, wouldn't take off or wouldn't put his mask on while eating. Yeah, that one makes sense. So, but just make sure that you're ready for that. Um, and then what are the requirements with car seats? You know, all of that stuff. I would want to know everything. Are you going to be able to sit together as a family? 
um, and it depends on how big your family is. You might take up like both sides of the aisle, and um, so you want to make sure that you have plan for that. Um, <clears throat> and actually, as your as your children get older, the airlines are less likely to make accommodations for older children. And so you might want to make sure that you are making your reservations early enough so that if I know Southwest, you can't choose your seats, but they're a great airline for, you know, luggage and, and in a lot of other ways. So I, um, you know, just plan. If you're not flying Southwest, you're flying something where you can reserve a seat, then I would want to get on early enough so that I can, you might pay a little extra because you're not at the peak time, but it, is it worth it to have your family sitting together or as, as closely together as you can? Um, I would always try to have an aisle seat for the adult so that it's easy for you to grab the kid and get up and you, if you've got to go change a diaper or uh, you've got to just, you know, walk and, and uh, calm them down, that, that'll that be easier for you. And then I would make sure that the, ch the kids are on the inside um, with the youngest child next to you. So those will always um, help you out. Now, there's some great luggage that is made for children, and I've seen it as I've walked through, you know, various airports as I've gone off to different um, events. But um, there, there's some that even have, it, it's on a pulley, or, it, you know, it's, it's on rollers, and, and there's a, like a leash thing that you can pull, and it's got a place for the kids to sit on top of their carry-on luggage. And so you're just dragging the kid along, and he's holding on, and thinks life is great. Um, and those are nice. Kids like having their own luggage that they are in charge of. And so uh, that's one way actually to help them be calm and to be thoughtful so that as you're getting on, they're carrying or dragging their luggage or sitting on it as you carry it. Um, as you're picking up luggage that they're in charge of looking for their own. And so they really like that responsibility and that's going to help you out. Um, and so then... In that carry-on luggage, you really want essentials for the flight. That's your first um, priority for that luggage. So you're going to want to make sure that you've got those comfort items that I talked about with um, being in the car. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you've got enough diapers and wipes and um, you know the tablets and uh, now kid-sized headphones. And I didn't say this when we were talking about cars, but I wanted to let you know, please don't get these like in the ear um, head or earbuds for kids. It does damage to their ears. You want to get over the ear headphones and that's for them to use all the time until, until they're probably in third grade, I would say, at fourth grade. Um, and that's going to protect their ear health and their hearing health. So make sure that you've got those. They are the right size to fit your kids. And so that doesn't become a problem. You might also want to have art supplies in there so that they can color or scribble or, you know, um, you're not going to want paint in there, obviously. But, you know, markers, colored crayons, or colored crayons, colored pencils and crayons, those kinds of things um, are always going to be good. Stickers are great. Kids love to put stickers on. And then, again, you're also going to want to make sure that you have some um, bags to just put the trash as they um, create it and then you can just hand it to the steward or stewardess as they um, or I guess they're not even that anymore they're attendants um, but you can hand it to them as they go up and down for their trash things um, and so that's something to do um, try to book an early flight an early flight in the day if you can and the reason for that is those early flights have fewer delays and um, and they can often be less crowded. And that makes it easier for passengers as well as your kids. Um, and try to avoid long layovers. And uh, I would also try to avoid changing planes. That can be more stressful, especially if your flight is delayed some and you're having to rush through. Not only are you stressed, but that stresses your kids and the chances of them acting up on that second leg of, of the journey um, increases. So think about that. Um, and then beforehand, you want to talk to them about expectations many times. 
So, you know, the older they are, the easier it is to talk to them. Okay, this is how we behave on an airplane. It's a very important place. You know, it's for grown-up things, uh, and and we want everyone to be comfortable. And if you're arguing or fighting, that, that not only is bad for our family, but it's bad for everyone around us who is sitting around us. Now, the you know, infants obviously, no. But I think, you know, even at two, you can have some very simple conversations. But even at two, you want to make sure that they are very clear with what is happening as they go through. And you might even want to make a little um, picture. And, you know, it's pretty easy. You could make a picture schedule, you know, that you're going to park the car. You're going to go inside. We have to check our bags um, and get our tickets. And then we're going to walk through security. And you might want to have a line. We're going to have to wait in a line. You know, we're going to have to take our shoes off. I would do like all those things. And, and you can just print that, those pictures, if you have a printer at home, um, on a, on a paper, and then they can have a marker and, and cross it off. A two-year-old, it can do that. And it will really help you get through everything. So that's something, um, be sure to arrive early, like a lot early. <laughs> um, because, uh, kids take longer to get through security, right? And you have a lot of baggage. And when you are rushing and you're, you're stressed and that's going to increase your child's or children's stress and it's going to increase the chances that they are going to act out on the plane and on the flight. So uh, you want to give them time to get there. And then once you're at the gate um, and you know where you're going, you're going to want to give them time to walk around and investigate and, you know, get a right on the people mover, you know, the, those moving sidewalks and um, or escalators that give them a chance to walk around in the uh, shops and and, you know, to look at things, go to the bathroom. You want to give them time to do all of that. And then they're going to have some of their wiggles will be worked out. And you're going to have, a, again, a chance at an easier uh, flight. Um, and so realize that having bottles. So if you have an infant and so you've got bottles uh, with them, uh, you might have to get screened further because there's extra liquid. What I would do is instead of having the uh, pre-made bottles and stuff is get the powder and then once you get through inside buy uh, enough water um, for them to you know so you can make the bottles when you need to and very often um, you can ask the stewardess they can maybe nuke it for you to warm it up um, if that's what you need um, and then take advantage of that early boarding for kids so then they have time to settle in especially once again if you're on southwest where you kind of get what you get so if they have early boarding for people traveling with children i think it's under five it might be as young as three but i'm thinking it's five and um and then you have a better chance of everyone sitting together and you also have uh, time for them to investigate. They're going to want to pull down the tray. They're going to want to move the, um, the, what do they call that? I guess the blind or whatever on the window. They're going to want to check that out, move it up and down. They want to push the button that makes it go back and up. And, and so then they have time to do that investigating before the flight takes off. And, and so they'll feel more comfortable in their surroundings and that they know what's going on. Um, so plan for the worst, hope for the best. So think, I mean, if everything goes to hell in a handbasket and the kids are just losing their minds, what are some things that I'm going to need to have on hand? I am not a fan of the Benadryl thing. I do have a family, several family who are doctors and they assure me that small amounts of Benadryl can be helpful um, and it won't hurt the kids. But realize that some kids, if you give them Benadryl, it'll hype them up more. 
don't know why that happens, but there are some kids that that happens. Know your kids. Um, but I would want to have a chance to, you know, have those soothing songs, to have a surprise for them that they don't know about. And so you might say, oh, wait, I forgot. I have a surprise, oh, but I can't give it to you if you're crying. I need a, I need a calm child to get the surprise. You don't even need to tell them what it is, but make it something fun and something engaging, something that they will like, whether it's a, a new, a, you know, a, a new matchbox car or it's a My Little Pony or it's, I don't know, whatever they're into, you know, um, Paw Patrol, something that they will enjoy getting, something that they can interact with and have fun with. And so sometimes having that surprise is something that will help them calm down because they want the surprise. Um, but no what's going on um you might <laughs> i was on a flight and this happened and i thought it was the coolest thing ever so this family came on and they had twin girls and they were uh i don't know maybe a year and so for the people who were sitting in front of them and behind them and next to them um they had these little thank you gifts <laughs> For thank you for putting up with my kids, you know, and and uh, we hope that they will be uh, well behaved. But being as young as they are, there's always that chance that they might get scared or upset. And so we just want to thank you, you know, for being patient with our family. And there was like a five dollar Starbucks card in there, and there were um, some mints, and I don't know, just it wasn't a lot, but it was just very thoughtful. And I thought, wow, that's genius. Um, and so you may want to think about doing that and that might help the people around you. I mean, there's always that person, you know, that's going to be upset no matter what. Um, and there's nothing you can do about them. So don't worry about them. They're going to be, a, if they weren't upset about your kid, they'd be upset about something else on the flight. So, you know, just be glad that, you know, the stewardesses really, you should thank them because now those angry people are mad at you and not at the stewardesses or the stu ah, attendants. <laughs> I'll get it right. So anyway, um, you know, don't worry about those guys, but it's kind of nice to have something that says, thank you for putting up with our family. Um, and let's see, how am I? Oh yeah. Have realistic expectations, honestly. Um, and realize that changes in time zone, changes in climate, changes in scenery, all of that will have an effect on your kids. And, um, and that brings to mind too, changes in air pressure <laughs> are gonna affect your kids as well. So I would make sure if your kid again has a binky, make sure they have that binky as their, um, that they can use. Um, but I would also have like maybe drinks. So it could just be water or, you know, something not sugary because you don't want them you know bouncing around again but um if they can drink during takeoff and especially as they start um lowering in elevation getting ready to land you know those ear popping um it can be really uncomfortable for your kids especially if they were like sometimes they might have a little bit of an ear infection you you haven't really noticed it but that change in air pressure will really make them notice it and so having something for them to drink will be very helpful. All right, so let's move on to trains. And I know a lot of people don't travel much by train. I remember traveling by train with my family when we were really young, going from um, Oakland, California up to Oregon. I recently, well, I, I recently, two years ago, we traveled from Denver to California, um, Sacramento, um, on a train, and I loved it. Um, it's a fun way to go. It's not a cheap way to go, though. If you have children and that train ride is going to be overnight, if you're going to be traveling during night hours, if you can afford it at all, I would definitely get um, the compartment, a compartment. So I know on Amtrak, they have, uh, you can get one for two people. It's very, very small, but it's enough that you have uh, bunk beds in there. Um, to sleep in and then they have bigger ones um, that will hold uh, I don't know maybe six or seven people um, and they are much more roomy and so if you can afford to do that I would definitely take advantage of that um, and here's one thing to consider if you get those on Amtrak 
it is also going to be, uh, your, your food is included in, in getting either the small one or the big one. It doesn't matter. Your food is included. And so that's a great savings right there because food on a train is expensive. I'm just letting you know. It's expensive. So you're going to want to consider that. Um, and then uh, I would also <clears throat> take advantage of the observation car. And that even if you're in coach where you just have the seats or you're in the uh, little rooms, everyone has access to that observation car. And so you don't want to hog it so you're there the whole time. But you also, you know, if you go in there sometimes or you can tell the kids, okay, we're going to do this and in a half an hour we'll go out and to the observation car and see what's going on. But uh, so those are great things. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on trains. People don't really travel on trains that much, but boy, I love it. I love seeing the scenery. I love meeting people, having the freedom to talk to people. Um, and I will tell you that the food um, on the train when we went was actually very good. <laughs> I was glad I wasn't, it was included in my ticket because when I saw the prices on it, but it was actually very good. So there we are, here we are, and how am I doing? Right on time. So I just want to encourage you to plan ahead um, and to make your trip successful for this summer and enjoy this time with your children. I want to remind you that you can get that summer planning guide. Um, just click on the, the um, website, should be on, the, on, on this, and then I also want you to remember starting June 1st, we are moving to Tuesday nights. So that's going to be fun. And uh, so until next week, oh yeah, until next week, we are going to have some fun. And we'll see. <laughs> I will be, uh, I don't know where I'm going to be uh, that night. Uh, maybe in a hotel room, maybe at my son's house. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what we have going on next week. So I look forward to seeing you there. So until then, let's teach together. Good night, everyone. <music>